I remember when I was younger, I was thinking, gosh, if I don't get a best time with this meet, what am I going to do? But, you know, that I understand what they're thinking, but it's still, you know, you don't you don't think about the two years in front of you. You think about in the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's what swimming, that's why swimming's amazing. You know, that's the beauty of the sport. So I think they're, these kids here are doing an amazing job, and I would do anything to be back in their shoes, honestly, anything. Well, I don't, would you say that? Because then you well, got to put in the training that you used uh, yeah, to. Yeah, this is true, this is true. But to be young again and, you know, get all the years back, just because, you know, swimming is amazing. And these kids are so lucky to be able to, you know, do this sport and come to beautiful Florida and swim. It's, they really are lucky. All right, so let's set the lanes here for this D final of the men's 400 IM. We got Mitchell Buccalo in lane number one from Motor City Aquatics. Coulter Carmen is in lane two from Marlins of Raleigh. And we got three swimmers from Marlins of Raleigh in this. Lane three, Connor Blanford from Marlins of Raleigh. Four, J Tosh Kawaguchi. In lane five is Alex Park from Team Suffolk. In lane six, Dylan Cudahy from Machine Aquatics. Seven, Brandon Goldstein from Nation's Capital. And eight, Daniel Chang from Barracuda. So we got lane number one here. Mitchell Buccalo from Motor City Aquatics leading after backstroke. Again, one of the things I think that makes it exciting to have the short course prelims and long course finals is a lot of these kids are going for lifetime best in the morning yeah. to get their short course lifetime best and they're coming back in finals. So it's actually teaching them to do two strong races each day, which you know most people will be like, oh, I'll just cruise through and get into finals. Yeah which you know you can't do at the NCAAs, you can't do at Worlds, you can't do at the Olympics, even can't really do it at Nationals. So, you know, I think they're getting in that, that training early of racing hard in the morning, which, you know, as you know, sometimes wake up in the morning, you know, you just want to just feel things out. And then if you don't, even if you don't have the choice, you got to do it. It's such a valuable lesson to learn. And I, I've learned it the hard way almost everybody has. So it's nice that the meet is set up the way it is just so they're able to learn it because in college nc2a's people who are following that meet this weekend for the women if you don't get it done in the morning you don't score teams for your team at night points for your team at night and you know the same goes for every other meet it's really interesting to just see how these kids are reacting to that because they really you know a lot i talked to a lot of these kids and they're like i don't want to do this long course i hate long course but they know what they have to do if they want to either get olympic trials get their junior cut they know they have to get up and race now, and if they don't get the time they need, get optimistic about the summer season. Yeah. So right now we got Mike Mitchell Buccalo still leading. After 50 meters of breaststroke, we got a close battle though, right behind him though, lane six, we got Dylan Cudahy in lane number six, Daniel Chang in lane number eight. Daniel Chang making a big push. He was actually in the final of the 50 breasts, I guess, about half hour ago. So he got his body warmed up for breaststroke, and now he's putting in a good leg here. But again, we'll have to see how this shakes up on freestyle. Most of the breaststrokers when you're in the IM, most of the breaststrokers aren't freestylers. So they're on a wing and a prayer sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and probably for you, you're like, oh, yeah, I know where the breaststrokers are. I know. I always know where the breaststrokers are. I feel like. For me, I always have an eye on everybody in the race, and I know when somebody's going to make a move and stuff, and I'm sure these guys know exactly what each person's going to do, but lane eight is looking good right now. He's looking great. Daniel Chang is really putting in a great, he's got a great kick behind him, too. You know, if I were doing for it, I have my legs would be on the floor, on the bottom of the pool right now. So that's Daniel Chang, Barracuda Swim Club. And he's opened up a body length lead here. His coach is waving him on on the side of the pool there. Just giving him a little bit of a push. Dylan Cutting, he tried to move back into it. You can see Daniel Chang struggling a little bit. Looks like he might hold on, though. Oh, Daniel Cutting got him by three one hundredths of a second. 434.17. 434-20, but those are great swims. Still not as fast as that swim in the E final, almost getting the Olympic Trials Cup, but still a very fine race there. That's what we like to see is the racing part. And they know how to, I mean, especially like, like we've said before over and over, 
They're not used to this long course racing now, so yeah. just get in there and race, and whatever happens, happens. Of course, we might have to help them get out of the pool. <laughs> right. We'll have a stretcher waiting. No, but I think it's awesome how it's like really putting things into perspective for me how fast these younger kids really are. 